In this video, we're going to look at the inverse kinematics for a planar 2R manipulator. Inverse kinematics refers to the situation where we're given the desired point for the robot end effector, and our task is to get the pin to work right. No. Our task is to um, determine the join angles required in order to get the end effector at that point. So there's our desired point P and for the reverse kinematics we need to find out what theta 1 and theta 2 are. And that's, we're given A12 and A23. So this is for a given robot size or given robot dimensions. Um, So here we know P, A12, and A23, and we want to find out what the joint angles are. And this is a more common uh, problem than the forward kinematics, because typically we're working with the robot in Cartesian space, and so um, we know the X and Y coordinates are where we want the tool to be, and it's the robot controller's job to drive the joint angles in such a way that the end effector will be where we want it. <clears throat> and now I'll detail the procedure for finding these uh, joint angles, theta 1 and theta 2. First of all, um, we have our equations from the forward kinematics. Um, this was what we looked at in the previous video x and y, uh, x is a12 c1 plus a23 c1 plus 2, and y is this. So using a certain trig identity, we can rearrange uh, that equation to get an equation in this form, d cosine theta 2 is equal to f. And here d and f are uh, constants, and they're numbers that we know the values for. So d is 2 times the product of a12 and a23, and f is this value here, x squared plus y squared minus a12. And these are all known values. x and y are given in the problem statement. So we can use this to, uh, with the inverse cosine function to get theta2. And as we talked about before, um, when we were looking at the trig identities, inverse cosine, there are two values, two angles theta, that will, uh, that will solve this equation. So there are two values for theta 2 that can solve cosine theta 2 is equal to f over d. And um, you see here that uh, those two values are just the negative of each other. So what that looks like is by saying that there are two values that can solve the equation, what that ends up meaning is that there are two configurations for the robot that could solve the problem and those are called the elbow up and elbow down configurations. So I've drawn the elbow down in black and now I'll add to it the elbow up. And um, we'll call, so since there are two angles that solve it, we'll call the first one theta 2a so this is going to be in the first quadrant for this example. Theta 2a is, you know, a positive number. So this is the value that would be returned by um, the inverse cosine function. So theta 2a is equal to the inverse cosine function of f over d. And that's from this equation here. And then theta 2b would be the elbow down configuration.
and looking at uh, this case here, these are the two angles that solve the equation. Theta 2b is just a negative of theta 2a. So for the inverse kinematics problem, there's more than one solution. Um, so given the position of the end effector, <coughs> given the position of the end effector, there are two robot configurations that could solve it. So our solution, we're going to have uh, theta 1 a and b and theta 2 a and b. So the joint angles for those two configurations. So we've solved for theta 2 a and b so far using um, this equation here, using this equation. And now we need to get theta 1. So to get theta 1, we will uh, use these two equations here, 3, 6, and 3, 7. And these also come from the forward kinematics equations or Fourier kinematics equation uh, 2.1 this one right here so doing some work on 2.1 gives us these two equations um, so we have this number times cosine of theta 1 minus this number times the sine of theta 1 is equal to x and this number times cosine of theta 1 plus this number times sine of theta 1 is equal to y so <clears throat> one thing to notice is that, well, two things to notice. First of all, this has the form of these equations here that we talked about in an earlier video. So let me write that over here. Okay, so um, from <clears throat> working with the forward kinematics equation, we get these two uh, equations uh, in order to solve for theta 1. And we see that those have the form of this here. And <clears throat> we found that we can solve uh, these two equations by um, getting them in the form of these uh, cosine and sine equations. So <clears throat> um, <clears throat> in order to solve for theta 1, we can just refer to the information from the previous video because uh, these equations are in the same form as these equations over here. And so the other thing to note is that these constant values um, right here, so in, in this case this would be the letter A uh, for our standard form and this would be uh, capital B one thing to note is that those depend on the value for theta 2. So here we have cosine of theta 2 is in the term A and sine of theta 2 is in the term B. Now those are known because we've already solved for theta 2 but there are two different um, values that theta 2 can take. So we have theta 2A and theta 2B. So those will give us different values for this uh, number B here because sine of theta 2a is different from sine of theta 2b.
And so when we have these two simultaneous equations, there's one angle that satisfies both of them. Um, so when we use theta 2a to determine uh, the coefficients for these equations, we'll get theta 1a. Uh, and when we use theta 2b to get these coefficients for the equations, then we will solve for theta 2b. And that is the general outline for solving the inverse kinematics, and we'll go over an example of, for doing this later.